Hello everyone. Welcome to DP Tutorials by Donny Jarwa. In this teaching module, we will emphasize and elucidate on one important topic, which is Ampere's Circuital Law. Now, Ampere's Circuital Law was brought forth by one French physicist by the name of Andre Marie Ampere. So, this photograph, which I have written over here, is the photograph of Andre Marie Ampere. That is his full name. He was a scientist who, in which the SI unit of current was given. We know that the SI unit of current is Ampere. And uh, the main uh, milestone in which the main contribution or milestone in which Andre Mary Ampere contributed was was immensely in the field of physics and chemistry, in which he founded the science of electrodynamics. Okay, he founded uh, these are uh, the science of what well, of electrodynamics. So these are the contributions of Andre. Mary Ampere. Okay? And he was born in the 17th century, a long time in the year 1775, and he expired in the year in the 18th century, which is around roughly around 1836. Okay? 1836. So uh, the main idea about this Ampere's circuital law is that Andre Mary Ampere was fascinated by uh, the discovery of Orsted's. Okay? He was fascinated by the discovery of Orsted, in which in the Orsted's experiment, we found that there is a relationship between the electric current, okay? electric current and magnetic field. Okay? In which Orsted's find out, okay? let us just reiterate, in which Orsted's find out that when there is a current passing through the wire, there will be one, there will be magnetic field associated with that wire okay? associated with that wire so these are some of the important uh, things and uh, in the year around 18 okay 27 it culminated in uh, this hypothesis what is known as this ampere's circuital law so what is basically this ampere's circuital law so over here before we move on before i uh, read out the statement of this Ampere circuital law. Over here we have this current carrying conductor, and if we have this current carrying conductor, suppose if I is the current which is flowing through that wire, okay, let I be the current flowing through that wire, and in this case, if I is the current flowing through that wire, which means over here if I is the current flowing through that wire, then we know that according to Ampere circuit law according to Orsted's experiment, there will be one, there will be magnetic field associated with that wire. See, like for instance, okay, when we apply this right hand, okay, when we apply this right hand grip rule in order to find the direction when the direction of the current is moving upwards, when the direction of the current, the current flow is upwards, then the magnetic field will be represented by the curl of the fingers, okay, by the curl of the fingers. So from here. It is evident that if I take, if I consider any point, say like for instance, if I take, I consider this point P, okay, I consider that point P, which is at a certain distance from this wire, I know that there will be magnetic field, okay, at this uh, point, okay, at this point, and the magnetic field at this point also will depend upon the distance. Now, in order to find out the magnetic field at this point, due to this wire, okay, due to that wire carrying a certain current i then according to uh, according to this uh, ampere circuital law it says that we if in order to find the magnetic field at this particular point p what we have to do we have to uh, construct a closed surface okay we have to construct a closed surface so what is that closed surface from here some of the illustrations we will consider this wire that straight wire carrying a current i so first point is that we have to consider any conductor which carries a current, okay, which carries the current I. And when we know that a current carrying conductor will always have one magnetic field okay, associated with it. 
Then number three, in order to find the magnetic field at a certain distance, say, let us name that this distance is what? This distance, let that distance be at the distance r. Then in order to find the magnetic field at a certain distance from the wire carrying this current, we have to uh, construct okay, or we have to draw, okay, we have to draw a closed surface, enclosing and passing through that wire. So what is that closed surface called? That closed surface is what we define as our amperon loop okay so likewise over here if i want to find the magnetic field at this particular point p i will take this spherical or circular uh, or circular amperon loop i will construct this loop or i will draw this loop in such a way that it passes through that point p and it passes through that point p and it encloses okay it passes through that point p and also in such a way that or such that it encloses what it encloses that wire, okay, that wire or that conductor carrying a current I. So, according to this Ampere circuital law, it states that for, from here, that means this line integral, okay, the line integral, that means over here, I can find out the magnetic field. So, what will be the magnetic field? Say, like for instance, over here, I can, uh, okay, over here, I can find out, say, like for instance, even this, uh, uh, closed surface, I, it is a surface integral, that means I can divide into many elements, okay, I can divide all these elements, all these elements, let the length be dl, 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 and so on and so forth. So, over here, if I consider this uh, element, okay, that element, whose length is dl, then from there, I can find what is the uh, element, the, the element. So, from here, the area or the element will be what, will be represented by this vector, and let that vector be let this element vector be 1, be this dl bar. So, that will be our 1. That will be the element vector. Okay, So, this will be our element vector. The element vector in this case will be represented by this vector dl bar. Okay, So, from here, this is your uh, concept pertaining to that. Then, from here also, likewise, if I want to find this is the point P over here, this is the point P over here, then if I want to find 1, the magnetic field, okay, I'm interested in finding the magnetic field, say, at this point P. So, how, what will I do? That means I have to draw a tangent. What do I say? I have to draw a tangent at that point P. So, by drawing a tangent at that point P, that means that will represent or that will give us the direction of one. That will give us the direction by drawing the magnetic field or by drawing the tangent at the point P. That means that will help us or that will give us the direction of one. Of the magnetic field okay, at that point P. So, from here, when I draw a tangent at this point, that means that will give us the direction of B. So, from here, I will take this pink colored vector, then okay, this pink colored vector across that point P, this will be what? This will be the tangent. The tangent is that line which passes through the point P, which cuts the surface at exactly one point. So, from here, uh, I will take this tangent at that point P, that means this will be what? This will be our magnetic field vector. So, it is obvious from here that uh, if I take the line integral, okay, if I take the line integral of the mag due to that element, okay, the magnetic field due to this element, so it will be 1, it will be the line integral of b dot dl, okay, it is the dot product, okay, b dot dl, which is equal to 1, mu naught times the current threading the surface. So, according to the statement, Okay, according to the statement, it states that the line integral of the magnetic field B, see this is the line integral of the magnetic field B any, around any closed part in vacuum is equal to 1, is equal to, it is equal to mu naught times, okay, it is equal to mu naught times the current enclosing the part or threading the part. So, what is that? According to the statement, that means from here we can write the mathematical expression which means that is the line integral of <coughs> b dot dl b bar is our magnetic field vector dl bar is a uh, element vector then this will be equal to one this will be equal to b one i so what is this line integral of b and dl the line integral of b and dl bar it is along that closed part okay so where this line integral of b and dl is our one is the line integral of b and dl and from here that mu naught okay that mu naught is the absolute 
permittivity, okay, or absolute permeability. Perme in case of magnetic field, we define as this, uh, this, uh, that quantity which allows magnetism to pass through it is known as permeability, okay. And from here, I is nothing but the current which encloses this part, okay, which encloses this part. So this is the mathematical expression, okay. This is the mathematical expression or the mathematical formulation of Ampere's circuit law, which was brought forth by Andre Mary Ampere, which I have told you in the beginning that he is a French, okay, he is from France, okay, he is a French physicist, okay, he is a French physicist. So, from here, now let us uh, study one application of Ampere's circuit law. So, basically, in order to find the direction of your uh, magnetic field at any point P, we have to draw a tangent, and from here, it is evident that this direction of the magnetic field will be in is, will be in this direction which means it, if the current is moving upward so the magnetic field line will pass uh, the magnetic field line according to, in this ampere loop this circular surface this surface which i have drawn over here this surface which i have drawn over here this surface is or what is known or it is a circular surface and that closed surface is what we define as what as a what Ampere loop, okay, Ampere loop, and from here, this uh, direction of our magnetic field will be in what? Will be in the anti-clockwise direction. Okay, will be in the anti-clockwise direction. So from here, let us do one application of Ampere circuit law, where we will find the magnetic field. Okay, the magnetic field due to a straight conductor, or uh, due to a straight wire. Carrying a current, okay, due to a straight wire carrying current. You will find the magnetic field due to a straight conductor carrying a current. I. So, this will be one application, and this is very, very important from examination point of view. Preferably, it will be around, uh, there will be a three marks derivation, okay, three marks derivation. So, from here, let us move on into the derivation of this particular equation. So, from here, let us consider a long straight wire and let this be. A long straight wire in which it is carrying a current I in the upward direction. Okay, in the upward direction. So from here, uh, the description is that we have considered an infinitely long straight wire carrying one, carrying a current I. Okay, carrying a current I. Carrying a current I. And let P. Okay, from here, let us take this point P, which is let this point P be. At a certain distance r away from the center o so if i take this as the center okay, if i take this as the center of this wire that means this point p is at a certain distance r okay is at a certain distance r from the wire okay which is uh, which is at a certain distance from the wire then from here in order to find the magnetic field you have to find the magnetic field at that particular point that means you have to find the magnetic field at that particular point so how will you uh, do that for finding the magnetic field at this particular point b how will you find the magnetic field at that particular point p you have to uh, construct you, you have to construct what you have to construct and draw an ampere loop so what is an ampere loop an ampere loop is nothing but a closed surface that means when you draw a surface to this point that means there should not be a gap it should not be a gap over here there's a gap this is incomplete that means when I draw any surface, the surface should what? Should be a closed surface. It should be a circular, like in this form, a circular surface. So likewise, I will take this circular surface and I will construct in such a way that this surface should pass to what? Should pass to that particular point P. And it should also enclose what? This circular surface, which is our ampere loop or ampere circular surface, it should enclose this current carrying conductor okay so from here uh, let us move on into the main derivation from here i will consider suppose from here also i can divide this surface uh, i can divide that surface or ampere loop into many many elements okay each element is of length dl each element is of length dl each element is of length dl so we know that if we sum over all this dl it will give us the uh, circumference of this uh, uh, ampere loop. So likewise over here, if I uh, take 
the this current element suppose i take i consider that current element so from here this point let that current element be one be this dl that dl is a one is a one current uh, this dl is a one element okay any element then from there if i want i have to represent that element in terms of a vector okay i have to represent that element in terms of a vector so from here if i take this blue, yellow colored uh, vector let this yellow colored vector represent what represent our element vector which is what which is our dl bar this is our element vector dl bar then by applying that right hand thumb rule by applying that right hand thumb rule you can find out the direction of what you by applying that right hand thumb rule you can find out the direction of the magnetic field so uh, with the help of your thumb okay pointing upwards okay so from here the curl of the fingers will give you what the thumb will point the direction of the current and this curl of the fingers will give you the direction of your magnetic field so our magnetic field in this case will be pointing on this direction that means it will pass through this point p then uh, at that particular point p it is very very clear that if you want to find the magnetic field b you have to uh, draw what you have to draw a tangent so when you draw a tangent at that point that tangent across that point will let us represent that tangent across that point p by this pink colored vector this pink colored vector will be uh, that one our magnetic field okay our magnetic field okay, our magnetic field at that point p due to the current element let that magnetic field be b bar okay so from here it is very very obvious that the direction okay that the direction this yellow colored vector indicates what this uh, yellow colored vector indicates this yellow colored vector indicates the direction of our dl bar at that point p okay, at that particular point p and also uh, this uh, what this green uh, this uh, pink colored vector at that point p represent what represented our uh, magnetic field vector so from here it is very very obvious that the angle between this element vector and this uh, magnetic field vector the angle between them is how much this angle between them it is equal to zero degree at each point within the magnetic field say like for instance i consider another arbitrary point q so from here if i want to find out if i take this as the current element uh, as as the element dl then from there also uh, that means with the help of that uh, suppose like for instance over here if uh, i take any point q and uh, let this be one uh, let this be uh, let that also be dl then from there if i want to find out the area element that means the area element in this case will be one will be in this direction this will be one this will be our uh, element vector then at that particular point p if i want to find out the direction what will be the direction the direction will be drawn by a tangent so that will be the direction so it is obvious from here also that this uh, dl bar and your b bar are one are in the same direction so angle over here is also one angle for that arbitrary point q the angle between those two vectors is also one zero that means on each point within this circular loop the angle between b and dl always it is one always it is equal to zero degree which means that uh, they are in what they are in the same direction so these are the most important analyses for understanding the concept of application of ampere's circuital law okay ampere's circuital law so from now or from here let us just move on into the derivation of uh, our equation then from here from the figure it is uh, evident that the vector element what is that vector element this dl bar the vector element dl bar and the magnetic field vector okay b bar r1 in this case they are one they are parallel to each other so when they are parallel to each other it means that the angle between them it is how much the angle between them is zero degree which means that this a magnetic field vector and our area and our element vector are acting on the same are in, acting in the same direction which uh, convinces us that if you want to find the line integral due to that loop okay 
if it is due to the error uh, if it is due to that current element simply due to this element you have to write only b and dl okay? b and dl but if you take into account all, all the other elements of that of that circular loop that means that is why we have to take what we have to take the line integral so that line integral will help us to find the magnetic field so the line integral at this particular point will be since it is dot product over here b over here this will be what b bar and dl bar okay this comes from uh, dot product of two vectors okay? this comes from dot product of two vectors we know that in case of dot product of two vectors okay? in case of dot product of two vectors so we have a vector a and a vector b okay? these are the dot product of two vectors so it will be a b okay? cos of the angle between the two vectors cos of the angle theta between the two vectors so over here b bar is our first vector dl bar is our second vector so from here we have when we write in terms of uh, using that dot product rule so using that dot product rule from here this is in terms of vector form so b dot dl once you have uh, used this formula you should not put that dot okay from here this will be what cos of the angle so what is the angle between the two vectors the angle between the two vectors is zero degree so from here we know that cos of 0 degree will be equal to 0. So, you are left with line integration of B and DL. So, mark this as equation number 1. So, from here also it is obvious that at all points, be it, uh, be it point P, be it this point Q, or be it any point, suppose R, all the, all the magnetic field across all this entire loop, it should be what? It should be the same or it should be constant. So, from here, since we will put a uh, condition since b okay since this magnetic field b is same at all points in the loop so this b is constant so which means that if you look from this equation one that means uh, since this is an integral sign we can take this b outside of the integral sign so therefore okay therefore one implies this is the line integral of b and dl so taking uh, b outside we are left with what? We are left with line integration of dl. So, what is this line integration of dl? But if you integrate over all those small, small current elements, if you integrate over over the all those small, small current elements, if you sum over all these small, small current uh, current elements, it will give us our what? It will give us the circumference of that amperean loop and the circumference of that amperean loop is given by what twice pi r what is this this is nothing but the circumference okay, this is the circumference of the amperean loop okay, of that amperean loop circular amperean loop okay, amperean loop so that is why uh, over there that line integration of b and dl this line integration of b and dl will be given by uh, 1 twice pi r so let us mark this as equation number 2 so we will use and apply ampere circuit law when we apply ampere circuit law at that particular point or across that loop will be given by what it will be given by <coughs> the line integration according to ampere circuit law the line integration of b and uh, b dot dl will be equal to 1 will be equal to mu naught i so we have solved this left hand side okay we have solved that left hand side and it reduces to this so which in this case we can uh, just write b dot twice pi r okay, b dot twice pi r this will be equal to 1 this will be equal to mu naught i okay mu naught i so from here okay so from here uh, we can uh, right this b this b will be equal to 1 this b will be equal to mu naught i divided by 1 divided by twice pi r so this is our expression okay our expression for the magnetic field due to a current carrying wire by applying our ampere's circuital law okay by applying our ampere's circuital law and uh, from here that means this is our derivation okay, this is our derivation and this expression gives us one this expression gives us only for one term like for example suppose from here 
if there are n uh, if there are n number of wires okay if there are n terms of the wire or there are n number of wires okay so from there if you from there if you consider this as equation 3 that means you just multiply this uh, equation 3 by a factor of n that means if you multiply that equation 3 by a factor of n then uh, this uh, magnetic field b due to a wire having n turns okay, due to a wire having n turns that means it will be given by mu naught ni divided by 1 mu naught ni divided by y by r so mu naught ni divided by 2 pi r 2 pi r so these are the uh, equations that uh, we have derived okay this is another expression for ampere circuital law due to a current carrying due to a current carrying wire due to a current carrying wire carrying a current right? so this are our what are our results and from here uh, we have to remember also that magnetic field is okay? magnetic field is a vector quantity since magnetic field is a vector quantity it will have what it will have direction so how will you find the direction you apply that right hand thumb rule like we have discussed earlier and from here the direction of the thumb okay, the direction of the thumb indicates what indicates the direction of flow of current and the curl of the fingers indicates what the curl of the fingers indicates the direction of our one of our magnetic field b so or the alignment of the fingers indicates the direction of your magnetic field b so uh, these are our discussion uh, related to uh, ampere circuital law and the application of ampere circuital law to determine the magnetic field due to a straight uh, conductor carrying a current just go through the entire lecture so that you will comprehend thank you